Um, I have never not uh, had comics around, essentially. Uh, my mom and dad both read comics before I was born. They read them when they were kids. So I've never been in a house that didn't have a short box in it, you know? <laughs> uh, so when I was old enough, you know, I would start reading their comics. You know, I'd read old Batman, old Brave and the Bold, and, and Fantastic Four, and Doom Patrol, and uh, Teen Titans. The stuff was already yeah. there. I mean, they even had some stuff that was like, like What the, there was Bob Hope mm-hmm. comics, you know, they had all this like, just all this old gold key stuff. And so I, I just kind of grew up around it. There was this book, it was called World's Greatest Superheroes. It was a hardcover, it was published in the 50s. Um, and inside that um, had, it was really interesting because I think this is one of the only times this has ever happened, but it was a collection of origins mm-hmm. of uh, Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, but it also had like Captain America, Namor, Human Torch, um, and had uh, the Spirit. Oh wow! But it was before um, it was before the '60s, so it doesn't have all those other Marvel characters like Fantastic Four and Spider Man. But it's right mm-hmm. there. But it basically has all that Golden Age stuff in it. Um, like I said, even the Spirit was in there. Um, and so having that was really my first experiences with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know, being a kid, just buying comics for a long time. There wasn't a comic shop near me. I would have to like get my parents to take me. I face that too. You yeah. know. So what happened? Struggles. Me, this is this is always my story, and I will I will tell you this. But so, mm-hmm. um, one day in 1992, we uh, we go to see Batman Returns, and we go see Batman Returns, and as we're going, there's a big sign that says there's a comic book store that opened up next door to the movie theater. If you take your ticket stub. Mm-hmm. To the comic book store, they'll give you a free dollar comic, which ninety two dollar comic was like a comic. It wasn't like yeah. you know a cheap thing. It was most books at that point were a dollar or dollar twenty five. So you're getting a good book, um, something that was probably pretty recent. And so when the movie was over, I went over there with my parents. My parents gave me their ticket stubs, and I got three Batman comics. Right, I saw Batman Returns in the theater seventeen times. <laughs> Your life was changed. I was because my next. And question. here's the other thing: is that that movie theater and that comic store was a bike ride away. You know, it was yeah. definitely a, a good bike ride, but there was a bike trail. I know how to get to it. Like, how many times did you flip through those those comics that you had? Oh, all the time. But here's yeah. the other thing: is that so? What I would do is, is that I would wait till the theater when the movie was over, mm-hmm. and when the lights came up, I would walk up down the aisles, and I would find ticket stubs on the ground, and I would collect all those ticket stubs, and I would walk into the comic book store and just like drop off a pile of ticket <laughs> stubs, and they'd be like, whatever, and like they didn't care. They're like, oh, whatever. So they would give me like a stack of Batman comics, mm-hmm. and I would or whatever. I was mostly Batman at the time. Um, but I was getting that, and then my parents would go to uh, Costco. I'm not sure they have Costco in Chicago. Oh yeah, right. Okay, so Costco, exactly. Right. right. So you know, they used to have, <laughs> you know, everything's in bulk, right? Yeah. So at the time, in the early '90s, Marvel and DC were making so many books. They would make these like packs of like everything that came out that month, mm-hmm. and so you know, it was like 20 bucks or whatever. So I'd buy those, and it would be like super random. So you'd have like yeah. I'd buy a bulk. And it would be like, sometimes they'd be duplicates or sometimes I'd be missing one issue or you'd be like, whatever. And and uh, I started getting Marvel DC from that and then going to the comic shop. And, you know, then I became that annoying kid that was just there mm-hmm. all the time. And so they eventually gave me a job uh, working at the comic book store. Oh, you when worked I was at 14. a comic book store. Oh, yeah. I worked yeah. all through high school and college at a comic shop. Um, but even then, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to I wanted to write comics. I wanted to make them. You know, I didn't want to just read them. I wanted to make them, you know, even working at the shop. Uh, I was having fun selling books, but mm-hmm. I wanted to make them. So wow. even then, back in like 2000, I started making books and selling them and trying to, you know, get them on the shelf and stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a lifer. Like I've, mm-hmm. I've been doing this comic book thing since I was born. I feel like I was born for it in a lot of ways. It's like, I don't know anything else. It, it, this is this is definitely uh, it. So I've, you know, when people ask questions like that. I'm like, I don't know the day I was born. You mm-hmm. know, it's like I've basically been here. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm a huge fan of your Flash run. Oh, thanks. Man. Um, I believe wow. we're on issue 89 or 90 right 88, now. 88 just came out. Okay. And then uh, what would have been 89, but is now 750, comes out on Wednesday. Yeah, okay. So this week. Yeah. As a, as a big fan of that run, was there any Flash writer growing up that you looked up to or were just inspired by? Oh, I mean, Mark and Jeff, mm-hmm. like, it's no secret. I, I steal from them all the time. You know, it's obvious, like, I'm obviously, like, a, a lot of my stuff is an honor to them and, and continuing things that they had kind of put on the table, mm-hmm. you know, because they would leave things. They left some story threads open that I picked up, you know, um, down the line. But, yeah, definitely uh, Mark and Jeff. Like, I started reading Mark's stuff with Born to Run. And even then, I was, like, kind of off and on on it. But, I mean, once you get around to issue 79, which is the last issue of Return of Barry Allen mm-hmm. um, that Mark did with Greg LaRoque. Um, 
I uh, that's one of my favorite comics of all time. It's crazy. It's like 80 pages long. And actually, Greg Roku, he uh, retired after that. That was his last comic. Uh, so I think he knew he knew he was retiring. He put everything into it and you can see it. It's beautiful. It's just an amazing Flash comic. It's, it's my favorite Flash issue. Mm-hmm. I think it's one of the best Flash stories ever. Uh, but yeah, obviously, Mark and Jeff and yeah. and they know, too, like Mark and Jeff and I, we've had enough conversations where they're, they're well aware. Mm-hmm. I met Jeff when he had only written like three issues of Flash. OK. Um, I met him at a convention. I walked up to him and it was funny because, you know, now if Jeff was at a con, he'd be mobbed with people, you mm-hmm. know. But back then, he you know, he hadn't hit a, as hard yet because um, he just started writing Flash. I mean, he was already been doing stuff before that with Stars and Stripes and things and he'd done Day of Judgment. But um, I came over and was just like, I love your Flash run. And we started talking. I mean, we had three issues in. Um, we started talking about Captain Cold. He drew me a little Hawkman. It was funny. Cool. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely Mark and Jeff are probably the two that I look up to uh, the most. So you my first death. my first introduction actually to your work was when I was reading Dark Knight's Metal, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I wasn't as familiar. Now mm-hmm. I've read your Flash run and I love oh, it. Thanks. But this character right here, mm-hmm. um, can you tell us a little little bit about him and how he, he yeah, came about? And sure. especially with DC Publishing, where they kind of mm-hmm. just like we need a character to fit into this universe. Uh, I mean, I'll, I will tell you that is the easiest comic I ever wrote was uh, mm-hmm. that issue because I knew it so well. I knew the character, I knew the story, I knew what I wanted to do with it. You know, I'm I'm good friends with Scott and James, and we had all been talking about what he wanted to do with this big event. Yeah. Um, you know, with the dark multiverse and with Barbatos and mm-hmm. and with the uh, with the dark Batman, with the dark nights, we had had all these conversations about it. We had had a summit in November of 2016 where we went to New York in a room, a bunch of us um, and like uh, Jim Lee was there and, and, and we sat down and started talking about these characters. And what would be fun? Like what would be the yeah. fun stuff to do? What would be something to explore? And obviously, you know, uh, a Batman with the super speed was on that mm-hmm. list. And I remember um, we had just talked about it a lot. Um, Were you involved with the character design? Because that is one thing. That is all really Greg. Awesome. Okay. I mean, that's all Greg. I can't I can't take credit for Greg. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, Greg is a monster. He's like one of the yeah. greatest comic artists of all time. And and uh, he drew designs for all of them. Okay. And that actually where a lot of things came into play because, mm-hmm. you know, um, I knew the character and I had thoughts on what he was going to be like. But then what happened was, if you look at that design, there, there's there's almost an engine quality to it. Especially mm-hmm. if you look at his original design for it, it was almost like he had like exhausts on him. You know, he yeah. had. So I started thinking about that. I'm like, oh, he's like a car. He didn't need his speed force. No, but I was like, yo, he's like a car. He's like a yeah. machine, you know. And I started thinking about that a lot. And we started talking about him being this like hot rod and all this mm-hmm. stuff. And then that's where I realized like, oh, Batman straps Flash to the Batmobile. <laughs> <laughs> and then drives into the speed force and that's how they become red death and i was like all right i got this that is badass and yeah. so i wrote that issue and it was cool because i was the first one so out of all the crossovers all of the one shots i wrote red death first okay. and that became the model for the rest of it like um we had this meeting right after that i think we had a meeting in i think it was june mm-hmm. um and i already written it um it was before issue one came out we had this meeting where we were talking about the books and talking about DC stuff moving forward. And, and, um, Scott had done this book called all star Batman. Mm -hmm. Um, and the first issue Batman has a chainsaw and it's awesome. Yeah. And so we had this whole conversation about chainsaw moments and and moments like that, where it's like, try to find those in your issue, try to find that moment that is just so cool. Um, and we use that as an example was the Batman strapping the flash to the hood of the Batmobile, Mm -hmm. uh, which I know is like super screwed (laughs) up, but you've never seen that before yeah. and that kind of energy i think and it, it was my favorite comic. origin in that in thanks that yeah I, I i just knew it dude it's one of those ones you just kind of like yeah you know it you feel it so i wrote it and um i remember i was at San Diego comic-con talking to one of the editors on the phone in my hotel room about making like little tweaks to it but the whole thing was that like do not mess with this middle part like we all knew we had to make some changes to the ending in the beginning to make sure it like tied into other stuff we also wanted to make sure that like there was at least one moment with iris and wallace in the issue mm-hmm. um but yeah man that's one of the easiest things i've ever worked on was that book i just knew it i, I just knew it and i i liked writing that character a lot we got to write him in the the uh, wild hunt issue and there's some other stuff coming you know because death metal's coming so yeah. yeah loved it going into one 
final character that yeah. just came into play mm -hmm. is Paradox. Mm -hmm. It showed up in issue 88. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about how that character came to be? Was this in the back of your mind for a while? Or? Yeah, I mean, he's hinted all the way back to the annual. I mean, mm -hmm. if you go back to the first annual that came out at the beginning of 2017, you know, if you go all the way back, or I think that was 2018, but, you know, you go all the way back to the prelude to Flash War, he's mentioned there. Mm -hmm. We had really been building him and, and talking about him for a while and what he meant and who he was going to be. Part of his origin is because, um, like origin in terms of like meta, in terms of us building mm -hmm. him, um, I feel that, you know, Barry has all these enemies. You know, he has yeah. Captain Cold, he has Reverse Flash, all these. One of Barry's enemies, and I think it's funny that no one ever gets to play with this, um, is the Anti-Monitor. I mean, Anti-Monitor is responsible for his death, but he's never a Flash villain, right? Like yeah. he's a, he ended up becoming a, a Green Lantern villain during Central Core War. And I always wanted a character like that, like somebody on a cosmic level. You have to think about this, like Barry is so tied into the multiverse. Mm -hmm. He is so tied into, I mean, he's he's the first one that crossed over, you know? He went to Earth too. He went and met Jay. He's the first one to do that. Um, but he doesn't have any cosmic multiverse villains. Like not really, you know, you could you could argue, you know, the stuff with the crime syndicate, but I mean, like he doesn't have that kind of character. And so I was like, let's, let's make that. Let's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and there has to be there has to be repercussions for him doing what he's done. And that's even explored a little bit in 750. There's a moment where you see him go to see Jay and it's like, come on, Barry, you, you think that you crossing over <laughs> to another world was going to have zero repercussions? Uh, you don't think anybody would say maybe you should have done that um, and what that does to people and, and what you're doing to the universe. Um, and that's what paradox is. Paradox is uh, a side effect of Barry's decisions. You know, Barry's made some selfish decisions i mean yeah traveling to earth too like mm -hmm. of, course, of course there's gonna be repercussions for that you know uh flashpoint you know we obviously know there was a lot of repercussions because of flashpoint um and i and, and flash war you know and I, and I wanted a character that would come in there and be like and call barry out for that and that's so all that went into him into making him did his origins change at all when you were writing the book or was it kind of set when you started thinking about the character and what it was going to be about? a little bit okay. a little Very bit there was oriented and all that was going to be was, there okay. all that was going to be there all the stuff with the family mm -hmm. it was um it was more about i think the only thing that changed was removing him from the timeline um there's this really great story um, in Astro City called A Dream of You mm -hmm. that Kurt Busiek did um, with Brett Anderson where it's about, it's the one that they won the Eisner for, um, where it's about in the Astro City world, basically crisis on if an earth happens and when the reality gets reset, his wife is missing and he doesn't know that. Like he doesn't realize that when the reality was reset, his wife was never born, mm -hmm. but he still dreams of her. It's a beautiful story. It's beautiful. He, he, he uh, dances with her in his dreams. It's It's tragic beautiful the Had hangman shows tier. up yeah. oh it's great it's, it's one of the best comics ever made um and i wanted to do something like that without completely ripping it off mm -hmm. um but i love that story and i thought that you know we had the Christ life on earth like that happened yeah. you know the story that they're they're uh, emulating that did happen and I, I wanted to show a version of that and so being him the one that was removed was mm -hmm. the main thing i think that was changed but you're, you're talking like really early conversation with the character that was the only thing that kind of changed um but I wanted I wanted that because I wanted him to kind of go through a version of hell a little bit. And so that's what you saw gotcha. in 88. You know, you saw what he went through and the decisions he made and, and how the hate for Barry grew mm -hmm. through this experience. Absolutely. Um, you know, and he's tied into Barry's origin because, you know, the night that he saw the multiverse was the same night that Barry got his powers. And, you know, I, I wanted to connect all these things together. But, uh, yeah, I, I just really wanted to do a cosmic character that would confront Barry on a, on a um, different level, I think, than people uh, normally see from Barry. Very cool. I appreciate your time, Joshua. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was great. Thanks again. I'm looking forward to where Paradox goes and in, in the future issues of the Flash yeah, this Run. This next arc is 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 pretty crazy. Yeah, there's a lot of seeds of things we've been building that are going to start uh, coming together. You'll see in the next uh, this list this year, these next few issues.